Good everyone, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Might take care of uh, ano, for translation ha. Because I want to speak in Tagalog. <laughs> Don't worry, Mike will take care of you. Okay, so magandang hapon ulit sa inyong lahat. Uh, and of course, uh, natutuwa kami na uh, ang uh, NCPAD ay nagkaroon ng ganitong pag-aaral tungkol sa implementasyon ng PIDAW. I just want to bring you back to the memory lane, no? 1996, a group of persons with disability was campaigning for OPDA. And, uh, and that was uh, uh, pioneered uh, in, uh, for an ordinance in Rizal, Mandaluyong, and uh, other uh, places. And uh, luckily, Mandaluyong was the one who passed an ordinance creating the Office of Persons with Disabilities Affairs, which uh, for the years has evolved. And in the year 2000, uh, a national federation was uh, organized uh, by the name of Alianza ng May Kapansan ng Pinoy. And uh, they were founded by an international NGO to, uh, to do a massive uh, membership campaign and uh, went around 16 uh, regions, provinces, uh, to orient the uh, persons with disability organizations about uh, coming up with a federation of one voice for advocacy, and that was uh, Pinoy. Why I should know because I was a part of the team who really moved around the uh, 16 regions and provinces to meet persons with disabilities from the grassroots, and from there we campaigned the. Uh, that uh, all, all persons with disabilities uh, organization should campaign for the passage of the of, of OPDA as an ordinance. Then in uh, 2010, there was a law, uh, but in the law, there is no uh, provision for IRR. But still looking at uh, that, uh, Pitao uh, uh, no, or the RA1070 was uh, also lifted from Magna uh, Parta uh, on the establishment of an institutional mechanism at the local level. Then uh, we all uh, believe that uh, uh, maybe uh, there must be uh, we can use the uh, implementing rules and regulation of uh, the Magna Carta, but couldn't find it. And when I assumed the uh, office as uh, executive director of NCDA, we had a... Uh, because uh, we really believe that having uh, an, uh, an OPDA or PIO is really promoting participation of persons with disabilities in local governance and maybe because we have a lot of uh, disability law and uh, not of, and the uh, implementation is really weak. We nakita natin na talaga na uh, pitaw ang sagot para makaabot sa mga big pansanan yung mga servisyo at mga programa, no? And it should be the local uh, government unit who should implement. After all, Lahat naman ang bataas dapat ay uh, ang LGU ang nagpapatupad. Da? So how can we uh, uh, be assured of implementation? Of course, we should have an office dedicated to the concerns of persons with disabilities. But having an office does not mean uh, that organization should be left behind. The more organizations of persons with disabilities should be uh, strengthened so that they can come up with better decisions, they can fully participate. Pero hindi ka na nangyayari. Sino ba ang kaaway matalas ng mga persons with disability leaders? Kapag tinakroan sila ng uh, MSWDO at magmamunong na, wala na magkaaway na sila. Diba? Kasi nga, not everything, uh, and that's about the local social welfare office has limited mandate. 
They cannot push for your accessibility. They cannot push for employment. Kasi, may kanya-kanya ang ano yan, uy, ang haba ka dyan, ha? Ten minutes pa. May kanya-kanya ang ano yan, may kanya-kanya ang per, may kanya-kanya ang uh, unit sa dapat ay uh, kinapat, ay dapat pinapasukan ng uh, pilot ng disability coordinator or sa or let's say it out, no, na dapat ang servisyo ng bawat departamento within the local government should include a disability pro program. For example, if you are a peso at ikaw ay pitaw, who would, who would you lobby to implement disability employee inclusion of disability, uh, of employment of persons with disability? Siyempre, it means mo yan sa peso. And the PITAO can come up also with a, uh, with a special program for uh, types of disabilities which, which cannot be placed by peso. It's a two-pronged approach, right? Because disability inclusion is uh, a two-pronged approach. It could be mainstreaming the concern of persons with disabilities uh, within the existing program and <coughs> coming up with a disability-specific uh, program addressing persons with disabilities. So, uh, the implementing uh, nature of PITAO would come in. So, we really feel that PITAO really has a very uh, a hard uh, job. Have you got if you are a PIDAO vocal person and, and uh, beside you is a PWD vocal person of LSWD, oh, ano ba ang pinagkakita ng trabaho niyo? <laughs> diba? Kasi nga, nalilito kayo, uh, hindi niya ma-distinguish. Bakit ba? Kailangan nga uh, under the office of the mayor si PIDAO and, and, and meron pa PWD vocal person si, si LSWD, oh. A creation of PITAO will not terminate the vocal person of this, of, P, uh, of MSWD. Why? Because this vocal person of MSWD is coordinating the implementation of social protective programs or marginalized PWD. While the PITAO vocal person or the head is coordinating the inclusion of disability programs in all uh, units of the local government. Mahirap pang itindihin yun. So, why, why the need for an assembly? Well, IRR uh, was uh, started in June uh, in 2013 when we called for a PITAO summit and there was a clamor for an IRR for all LGUs. Kahit sinasabi natin, uh, yung, uh, the law itself is enough to implement, pero hindi pa rin. But we need an IRR to instruct all LGUs that get to use suwinti nyo. And how we ensure Bakit po magad? Started 2013 and was approved in, it was signed in 2016. Dahil nga sa dami ng provision na hindi matanggap, but even to and if they were able to accept it because we follow what the rights-based approach to disability programming is. The UNCRPD calls for consultation of the sector in all matters concerning their development. So, PIDAO is a, is a development of the, in the lives of persons with disabilities at the LGU, so they have to be consulted. Pero ano sila sabi? Una, the LGU should pass an ordinance adopting the structure of PIDAO and the staffing pattern. At na-adapt, there should be a vacancy declared and it should be published. Uh, when the vacancy is published, then on the last day of uh, publication, there has to be a general assembly. 
Which means you have to undergo process. You cannot call a general assembly if you do not have uh, applicants for PITAO, if you do not publish position. If there is no uh, call for the conveners like the Federation President, LSWDO and the uh, MLGOO or the DILG local. Pero, what are these LGU do, uh, are doing? Walang, wala naman silang ordinance, wala naman silang plantilla, and then they will call for an assembly. Isn't that fooling the persons with disability? And we have a clear guidelines on how to uh, select nominees from among the applicants. This is very, uh, moot, <laughs> very moot and academic for all. Diba? Meron kang rule eh. Meron kang reference. And this, hindi natin yung importance of having a PWD Federation. At kung ikaw, PWD Federation President ka, and you're appointed as PWD, you have to relinquish your uh, position as a president. Bakit? Kasi nang magmamonitor sa'yo, who will evaluate if you are a good or not? And kung wala kong federation, how would you say that you are performing well? So this is the reason why there is a need for both the federation and PIDAO to work together for check and balance to ensure that what you're doing is acceptable to your constituent. So, I guess, uh, PITAO really is a challenge no, for uh, every LGU. But we hope that if we strengthen uh, the organization of persons with disability, then uh, PITAO would come out naturally. If you don't have any voice to pressure the local government to, uh, to, do, uh, to establish PITAO, they will just sit there and uh, enjoy help without having be down. So, and uh, another thing is, if we have to, uh, we have to, uh, NCDA is coming up with a, a module in the uh, management uh, development program for PITAO officers and maybe a training for aspiring PITAOs. So, uh, we just had a, we just, and we run a series of leadership training in every community for persons with disabilities, especially in advocacy, in gender, and development, and in the, in the disability lens. Hopefully, if, uh, if we have one, uh, if you say that, how many? 40% PITAO. We only have 184 uh, in our record uh, because we only appear that it's PITAO if there is an ordinance passed. So we do not honor, we do not report uh, PITAOs which were created by executive order and Turo Turo of the mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma'am Carmen. And now, may I call on uh, Ms. Melanie Keaton of uh, BLGS for her reaction. Um, just allow me to stay here because I have a code. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm Melanie Keaton. Pa. I'm part of the National Working Team of the Seal of Good Local Governance. I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to uh, Director Alan Pai. Um, actually, we are um, I, we are partners with the NCDA, particularly on coming up with the uh, um, indicators, particularly for the social protection area of the SJLG. So our first indicator uh, pertaining to um, um, na it has something to do with uh, PWDs is with the compliance with the accessibility law. 
Um, we have come a long way actually. We started off with um, looking at just one, compliance for Sarampa. Uh, we started with about 17% of LZUs complying with it. No first year na SGLG on 2015, 2014, although yung uh, award is known as 2015 na na confirmed. Uh, we started off with the 17, nung kasama pa, sinama kasi namin yung compliance with PWD toilets, mababa yung compliance. So, we relaxed it kasi parang wala kaming lalabas na award is known. So, ang um, naging, um, naging uh, usapan nila is relax it a bit kasi ini-introduce namin, although isipin nyo matagal na yung batas, uh, batas pambansa for accessibility. Um, then, um, really introduced namin yung compliance with the PWD toilets just last year. Mataas naman yung compliance na, about 50% of LZUs ang uh, nakapasa for uh, both rampa and um, PWD toilets. Um, since then, no, 2014, we have been partnering with NCDA and from uh, development of indicators po hanggang sa pag uh, identify namin ang shortlist ng LZUs to be passers nandun sila kahit hindi PWD concern na yung tinatakil na concern na PWD, hindi na, non PWD concern na yung uh, issue namin sa sa mga na lumabas on the assessment um the, the your uh, the study of uh, CLRG uh, used the data for LGPMS so Yes, may ko po kung ano yung LGPMS kasi baka yung iba, hindi rin particular. Uh, we also manage the LGPMS. This is the local performance management perform local governance performance management system which is the mother program of the SGLG. The LGPMS is a self-assessment while the SGLG is a validated tool. Ito yung ginagamit po namin for uh, for the for the terminating awardees at ito yung may kalakip na uh, kalakip na incentive through the performance challenge fund. Um, for now, ano bang nangyari na? Um, uh, we thank, uh, we thank, ano, we thank the, the center for using our data, kahit pa paano, although it is not, it is not a validated data, it was substan substantiated. Uh, you made use of it, kahit hindi pa yun ganun kaganda. Because of what we only um, asked from the profile is kung meron ba kayong pitaw. Nothing else. We did not ask whether you have a focal person, do you have an established office. Wala ganyan. Yun lang yung limitation ng data. But the good thing is, we have elevated pitaw as an indicator for the assessment for the SGLZ. So now, um, ginagab, ginagamit na namin siya for uh, the 2018 SGLG um, although hindi pa talaga sabi nga iba-iba yung situations na LZUs na mention kanina ng mga case studies uh, although ang ating sanang ideal is for the province HUC and uh, hanggang first to third class municipal they should have the office um, nilax namin, nag-consider kami dun sa merong uh, meron na munang focal persons. At dun tayo, kasi nag-reintroduce kami ng data, we do it gradually. Uh, Nag-indicator, we do it gradually. Hindi po namin sila um, binibigla yung LZU. Bakit naging ganun yung decision? Um, just because um, based din na rin sa study, may low compliance dahil most likely dahil sa Matagal na yung batas, 2010, but the IRR just came out in 2016. So, no 2017, lumabas naman yung, jake, ng, yung uh, memorandum circular from the DILG regarding kung paano mag-establish ng pitaw, yung no office. And, uh, and uh, by then, by that time, kasi that was, I think that was September of 2017, lumabas yung memorandum circular, um, halos tapos na, patapos na yung, makukompleto na yung budget cycle ng LZU for them to establish pa an office. Siyempre, for you to establish an office, kailangan mo ng budget. So, uh, in that case, for this year na po, pwedeng mag-lobby sa LZU 
na mag-establish ng pilong kasi start pa lang naman ng budget, hindi na may matatapos. Nasa June pa lang. So, nagsusulat pa lang sila kung ano yung mga items na kailangan nyo ng budgetan. Um, it is now, uh, this is a high approach. It is uh, an approach on time for lob to lobby uh, LGUs to include PIDAO establishment and, of course, to further PWD programs in the local level. Ay, tignan ko lang po itong aking ano ha, kodigo, kasi baka may nakalimutan ako. Um, uh, but, and of course, uh, S, on, the portion of the S, on the part of the SGLG, kasama pa rin naman yung compliance to, uh, with accessibility law uh, bukod sa uh, establishment ng PIDAO. Um, Minomonitor pa rin namin hanggang sa uh, makakomply sila ng todo-todo. Um, uh, kahit sa dalawa pa lang, dalawang ano lang, with the PWD toilets and the rampa. Uh, on to expanding, depende po sa magiging discussion ulit because we expand our indicators yearly. Depende na ulit kung ano magiging uh, 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 result ng discussion by the end of the year. As to the recommendations po no study, no? Uh, actually, uh, maganda yung mga recommendations na nilatag ng, ng center. Um, but, of course, um, particularly on, I would like to emphasize though, on data banking, para pare-pareho siguro, there should be one agency na magsasabi, magdidictate which should be in the data bank. Ano-ano dapat yung mga items na nasa data bank para across LGUs um, uniform. So maybe maybe NCDA can um, can start uh, anong, eh, anong data ang kailangan natin for it or kung sino po pa pong pwede makatulong. Um, and perhaps um, we can also uh, determine anong menu of programs na dapat meron Ang uh, PW, uh, meron for PWDs para meron din tayong uniform set of venues. Although, sabi nga, iba-iba yung kailangan ng bawat form of disability. And, um, and, uh, regarding po dun sa, um, recommendation to include this in the, uh, orientation for newly elected officials, uh, we can actually, on the part of all the BLGs, we can actually, um, maybe inform the local government academy to um, to coordinate with NCDA on how to um, integrate a module or maybe uh, a set of lectures na merong, uh, pido, uh, merong ma-further yung uh, tungkol sa mga concerns on uh, disability. And uh, for... Uh, the proposal to revisit the qualification requirements. I'm not quite sure kung pwede bang gawing gradual din siya for the first year. Okay, open yung ko na po ito. For the first year, ito lang yung expectation. For the second year, ba first year data banking, second year, or um, pwede kaya, okay na muna natin na, um, ano lang na, tawag dito designated officer. Kasi uh, halimbawa po kasi we did it with the local disaster risk reduction management officer for in on the side of the SGLG po ha. Kasi nahihirapan din yung LGUs uh, uh, sa pagkuha ng qualified na the LGMO sa kanila. Um, it could be kulang sa kulang siya sa educational background. O di kaya, meron din kaming iba na sila na nakadesignate lang sa kanya, hindi siya officially ma-appoint dahil sa hindi pa siya nakabasa sa CSC. Yung mga ganyan for professional, yung eligibility na lang ang kulang. So, pero um, just the same, nakagawa naman sila ng kanilang tungkulin bilang LDMO. So, in those, uh, may mga cases na um, kinoconsider namin yung local conditions ng LZUs uh, pagdating sa um, assessment. Um, in closing po, meron pa po ba akong natitirang minutes? Okay, in closing na po ito. Um, um, ano po, um, ang sa amin lang is naka, 
naka-indicate kasi yung tungkol sa financial, limited financial capability, naka-highlight ito sa, sa study, no? Uh, which sometimes lead to the prioritization of LGUs regarding the establishment or funding of the PITAO. Um, this can be addressed maybe, we don't know, through recognition and incentives programs implemented by LGUs such as the DILG, such as us palayon, to encourage LGUs to comply with policies regarding the PWD sector. So, um, among, this is among the objectives of the SGLG, kaya kami, kaya kami, um, kaya namin ito sinimulan uh, para i-affirm yung actions ng LGUs regarding uh, improving policy of environment. And, uh, ano pa ba? We also, ano, issue the, meron kasing sa bawat, sa bawat assessment year namin, nag issue kami ng government assessment report for each LGU to present kung ano yung naging performance nila for, that, for every particular year. Um, we can, well, on our part, we can further, uh, further uh, do steps to encourage the use of this document. Ang governance assessment report po, nakikita nyo, long list siya ng lahat ng indicators paano ka nag-perform. Meron niyang green, red, yellow. Green, pag you comply with it. Red, pag hindi mo na-comply. Green, a uh, yellow, pag kinonsider namin yung local condition. Um, and uh, we actually, um, provide copies of this to the NCU and kung sino po yung interested parties to uh, study. Ang dami kasi po naming data. So we started in 2014, so ibig sabihin meron na kami three-year data on uh, LZU performance. So we encourage the academe, um, other NGAs to use of this data to aid maybe direction setting and um, policy making uh, that is inclusive. And lastly po, um, of course, the, the department, the DILG, is willing to help and partner with um, with you to enhance the improve, uh, enhance the, pay, uh, enhance LG performance and promote um, PWD welfare. Yan lang po. Thank you. Prior po naman po sa pag-appoint, yung dumaan kasi siya sa proseso, diba? 
So, compliance na po yun sa mismo IRR, sir. Bago ka pa pa ma-appoint. Hindi uh, na kung hindi na kayo sa maraming babagsak po dito. No? Kasi, <laughs> sir, kaya nga po may consideration ngayong taon kasi introduction ng new indicator. Okay, ma'am, hindi siya kasali din sa tinatawag na uh, ano, uh, all or nothing rule. Di ba sabihin, pag may ano kang ano dito, hindi na, na fulfill. Pagsa, kasi hindi isa hindi pa ito kasali doon. Kasali po yan na. Pasa, pero mayroong may may consideration. consideration. Okay. Uh, next is yung um, with regards to, ito naman po ay sa ano na po, ALG na mismo, yung can DILG, MGOO, through, through their MGOOs, uh, monitor uh, the implementation of PIDAW. Ibig sabihin, when you create a PIDAW, hindi lang PIDAW kasi ilagay as a data na, ito, meron na kami PIDAW dito. Kailangan din po, uh, siguro, periodically, hindi ko alam kung monthly or quarterly, uh, a PIDAW should submit report to the, to the local chief executive, kami for this, with the MGOO, o para naman po, uh, yung RDO na may nasabit niya sa regional office and then may populated sa national uh, central office level. So, with regards to that, makikita po natin yung quality na, for example, yung budget allocation sa PIDAW, yung performance uh, function ng PIDAW officer mismo. Unlike po sa nangyayari po ngayon, ma'am, just to uh, sabihin na po natin ito frankly, yung pong MGO pa yung tumutulong sa mga LGUs para pagtakpan yung weak performance ng PIDAW during SGLG. For example, mga 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 ito, mga temporary, mag magkikrate tayo ng office for PIDAW habang kasi darating yung mga assessor. Pagkatapos ng assessor, wala na huli yung office ng PIDAW. Grabe siya nga, Kurt. <laughs> Pero reality, sir. Um, uh, regarding your suggestion, sir, uh, we, I will have to, uh, I think, talk it out with uh, the other bureau kasi sila po yung uh, supposedly monitoring for the this is the Bureau of Local Government Development. Sila po yung monitoring ng mismong uh, uh, implementation ng uh, ng pidaw. Uh, on our part po, gagamitin namin siya sa assessment. So whatever you say here, we will feed them. If feedback namin ngayon, uh, regarding po dun sa feedback niyo, sir, sir, pakibulong po ko ano MZ yan. Nagko call namin yung attention ng MLZ. Oh ha, thank you, sir. Okay, in addition to uh, Rex's question no, about eligibility, you, uh, absence of uh, eligibility should not be an issue in the appointment of PIDAW because you have uh, one year. You have one year to comply, and kung hindi ka na comply, that's the time na. Pwede pang bigyan, pwede pang bigyan ano? Pwede ka pang bigyan ng another year. And uh, also, there is a new uh, new civil service uh, circular regarding the uh, inclusion of uh, uh, of uh, plantilla positions with the uh, uh, of PIDAW as approved by uh, DBM. So it's now a part of the CFC 2018 circular, which was just released kailan ba yesterday, the other day. So. Yeah, we will email you a copy. So, yeah, so uh, eligibility is not an issue in uh, appointing the appointment of PIDAW, but the qualification standard should, the, the uh, applicant should meet the qualification standard. Uh, eligibility is still part of the QA, yes, qualification yes. standards. However, uh, you are uh, given one year um, sa, sa CSC. Is that your temporary appointment? Temporary In the absence of an eligible. Okay? In the absence of an eligible, the local chief executive can appoint a temporary person and make a compliance. Uh, ang, ang, ang point lang natin, hindi, hindi ako agreeable na nahihirapan kumuha ng qualified. Uh, uh, ang issue dyan, baka kulang sa information campaign. Uh, sa selection, sa recruitment. And number two, baka hindi, hindi naman nakalagay PWD lang. Na nakalagay sa do, preferably. Okay, so kung preferably, pwede hindi PWD. Okay? So, pero priority mo si PWD. But in the absence of a PWD, you can put somebody, dito merong recommendation na 
may passion, may heart. Tapos lang kasi comply with the U.S. Oo, oh, may puso. Na hindi issue yung bakit hindi. Uh, I- I- gusto ko lang i-clarify, yung, yung pidaw, hindi lahat. Di ba? Hanggang third class level of economy. Pero yung fourth, fifth, and sixth, focal under the law. Kaya hindi ko maintindihan bakit kinocompare si Lorenzo Ruiz kinocompare si Lorenzo Ruiz sa Carmona. <laughs> kinocompare si Lorenzo Ruiz sa Angeles. f class municipality si Lorenzo Ruiz. And hindi siya mandat, uh, mandated by law to organize Pidao. He is only mandated to have a focal person until such time na makuha niya yung third class classification, dun lang siya imamandato magkaroon ng pilaw. Sana ganun yung pagtingin. And last point, just so kung tingnan din sa study, I have not had the conclusion dito sa study kung yung pilaw, kasi di ba yung title nung ano, nung research is enabling persons with disability assessment of programs and services uh, mechanism ba? Uh, focus on PIDAW. So, hindi naman sinabi sa study kung effective si PIDAW as a mechanism enabling persons with disability. Ang nakita lang natin sa study, puro witnesses ni PIDAW. And, ang conclusion ba, pag nagawa yung mga recommendations ninyo dito, magiging effective ba? as a mechanism to enable persons with disabilities to empowerment. Dapat makita yon, pero walang ganung data. Um, pero sinasabi niya sa data, ang oh, NCDA meron ng ilalabas na National Disability Data Collection System para sa din ng MG. Thank you. Yung point niyo po about uh, fifth class municipalities, point well taken, tama po kayo doon, they are not comparable, and then dapat focal, focal person. Yung, yung second point po about effectiveness, that's not part of, I mean, given that uh, the IRR was implemented in, uh, in 2016, uh, like I said in my opening, uh, the impact of the establishment of PIDAOS cannot be established so soon, maybe somewhere down the line. So right now, more of a process evaluation ang kung ginawa na, namin uh, looking at how uh, the PIDAO or the focal persons were established. That, that, is, that would be a, uh, a valid uh, Yeah, but point. kaya lang, sabi niyo sa recommendation niyo, there is no compliance of the GA uh, requirement. Sinasabi na natin, 2016 si IRR, 2010 si law. Eh, si law, 2010, hindi naman nare-require si GA. Walang requirement ng General Assembly sa, sa law mismo. Ang General Assembly ay nasa IRR, which is passed in 2016. Um, there is also a memo on circular by DILG immediately passed, issued uh, after 2010 um, of the, of the, no, uh, RA10070. Uh, the, 26, the 2017 memo circular na sinasabi ni, ni Melanie is just an option of the IRR in 2016. Pero, ma, be that as it may, the GA is not part of the law itself as a requirement. Thank you. Thank you, Rico, sa And uh, before we go to the next question, if I may add, the, the case studies are 40 to 50 pages long, and uh, the case writers were given only five minutes to present. But if you're going to read the, the case studies, we have dedicated sections there for good practices of PIDAO. So um, I think uh, I, would, I would say that the research also focused not only on weaknesses, but also the strengths and the good practices uh, being done by our PIDAOs. I have read the, I have read the entire document, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I have read the entire document, so even if you have good practices and you have the summary here, the summary will also reflect the good practices. But it, it did not appear in the summary. Uh, sorry lang ha. 
but but the thing is, even in the in the report of the LJLG which you cited, that six out of ten LGUs are happy down. Um, there is sabi nyo, pwede half full or, or full ang tingin nyo doon. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa rin kayo nagtitiwala dito sa DILG at sinasabi ni DILG naman, hindi siya validated. So, kung 6 out of 10 LGUs have been down, tapos sinasabi ninyo, ilan dun yung yung 4 walang be down? Yung 4%, 4 percent, uh, out of the 10, uh, 4 LGUs. Meaning, doon sa 4 LGUs, doon may focal person. So, ilang ba doon yung focal person sa apat na LGU? Yung in our separate survey, which again, I recognize it's not so valid. <laughs> um, parang taken together, it comes up to 87%. Exactly. Yes. Sabi mga 47%. Yes. So, meaning the 47% of Could the 4 LGU, Dapat kasi, kung 47% of what? Kasi dito, 6 out of 10 is with PIDAW. Remaining 4 LGUs is without PIDAW out of 10. So what's the 47% of the 4 LGUs? No, it's 40. So our, our response are 230. So of the 230 respondents, 40% uh, had PIDAWs, 40 7% oh, okay. so, 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 mga 13%. So, hindi siya comparable kasi ang binasihan mo lang ng 47% is the 230 yes, po, yes, po. figures ninyo. While itong DILG, yung 6 out of 10 is the 1,700 plus LGUs. Yes po. So, hindi siya, hindi siya pareho ng... Uh, yes po. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, for those comments, so may I maybe hear the questions so, from the second row? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask my question to the Dr. Irene and uh, Ms. Melina. Melanie. Melanie. Okay. Alam uh, ko lang. 1% sharing with senior citizen and PWDs is a long, long time ago story. Matagal na. Uh, ilan po ba ang still, doon sa case studies, ilan po ba ang still following this kind of, uh, this kind of procedure? Kasi in the Gen General Appropriation Act or GAA, wala na pong sila na floor. So, how pa kung hindi pa binabago? I don't know why, uh, with my limited knowledge of uh, the procedure in local government, uh, bakit hindi pa nila binabago yung itong ganitong procedure na kailangan 1%. Matagal na po itong ina-advocate ng senior citizen that they do not agree. That's why, nung magkaroon po kami ng lobby with this, together with the senior citizen, ay nabago po ito ng, during the time pa ni President Pinoy. So, yun po ang tanong ko. And then, the second one, I would like to agree that Profiling or inventory of PWD uh, for work and employment is really very important. Sa recommendation, and yun nakikita ko. Pero I would like to be specific on that issue. Kasi, uh, we want, uh, sabi nga, mahirap daw makakuha ng persons with disability, lalo na doon sa mga provincia or summer uh, far, far flung regions. So, na mag uh, qualify as PIDAW head. So, kami naman po, uh, we want a progressive realization. Kaya, with this recommendation, it should be more highlighted uh, na may pakita na may power natin yung mga PWD na pwede maging head ng PIDAW. Kung hindi po kasi ito tinitingnan, ay pagpabayaan lang ng ating LGUs na, oh, wala kasi yung PIDAW head. Aside from the comments, of course, of uh, Director Director Subiaga and uh, Deputy Director Matli, nandoon po kasi yung may mga iba, hindi naman lahat, na meron, meron talaga. So, kailangan lang i-really push ng LGU. So, there should be a data profiling with regards to the uh, quali qualified PWD on this. Uh, I've seen that in one of your recommendations that's not explicitly explained. So, 
Uh, another thing is that I appreciate this kind of study because we will have an evidence-based documents with regards to PDAO. Although, uh, tama po si Director Matli na medyo kailangan din natin tignan yung ating uh, not only the gaps but the goods. Yun po yung aking gusto ni paabot. And then, uh, another one, uh, ang, uh, ang number three ko pong question is that uh, ito po ba ay yung mga sa case studies it's more on ano po yung ginawa ninyong methods? Qualitative? Quantitative? Ano po yun? Ang dami po yung questions. Yung one percent? Yung one percent po, hindi ko alam how many cases actually had that one percent thing. But I think part of the problem is also identifying or disaggregating what is uh, PWD budget and what is not. Because it also cuts across other programs. Like, sabi nung isa, isang case, pwede sa, sa engineering or sa health, meron PWD tagged na, na project. But before I answer the other things, balikan ko lang po yung methodology. I have to explain lang po yung methodology. It's yung, yung, yung survey namin. Okay? We recognize there's a limitation on the data ng uh, the ILG. One problem we had was we had to know okay, ano ba yung reason bakit wala yung ibang cases? What are, what are the barriers? So we said, we, we want to get at least some, some feedback on that. Okay? So ayun yung reason for the survey. But the, the fact that we are comparing, we recognize the limitation of comparing those samples because again, that sample is is not it's not 100% representative. But the fact that it has a certain percentage, we say, and, and of course, we're, we're open naman that it's not a randomized survey. It's indicative or close to what we're seeing with, with the ILG. What is more important for us there is actually the feedback that we get as to, okay, yung, yung, uh, yung pidaw ba or focal person sits in the, the local special bodies which the councillors and ano, would know. And that is data that is not captured in any other source at the moment. So it's of course it's not it's not perfect, but we're trying to capture something that I think the, the, the strength of that 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 quick sample is just measuring representativeness. And that's a message whether it's whether you want to debate the percentages or not is not so, I mean, it's not so important for me, just the fact that it is still underrepresented. Okay? It's not to be, an, ano lang, not to quibble with the, with the sampling. I mean, I know it's not perfect, but I think the question of nakakapture ba talaga yung representation, I think is the, the important thing to that. Okay? I recognize, I, your points are very valid. I, I agree. Uh, yung sa, Peso po, yung employment, I think that's also something that we 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 hope other LGUs uh, practice. It also recognizes that there are other laws that are being pushed down to local government units to implement, which is also that PWD employment ano, our provision sana, and those are things that sana makeri na ng, ng PWD federations or PDAOs eventually down the line and also establishes the means further for, 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 for that. So hopefully there's there's uh, a cross-fertilization and learning subject. Hindi ko na po naalala yung ibang points but those are the things that I... Um, Melanie, would you have something to share on the 1% sharing between senior citizens and the PWDs? Um, uh, alam ko lang po, actually, that Nanisa naman po ako sa isang meeting with PWDs, I think, sa office. I think, ang na-mention sa akin is na-scrap na yung tungkol dyan. But I will have to research further on. Hinahanap ko kasi siya kanina. Hinahanap ko siya, pero hindi ko makita kung saan. What I know lang is, is meron na, ang nakita ko lang is, on uh, on the budgeting side, no, meron five percent coming from GAD uh, in the era. You know, I can but but this one percent, hindi ko pa nakikita talaga. I'm sorry, I cannot I cannot really answer it right now. I will have to clarify it. Oh uh. uh, yeah, the scrap, yeah. Uh, I believe Mamuela has something to say. I think it was 
draft of the 2012. Okay. Thank you, Mang Mela. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. And then question here, and then one question at the back. Hello po, I'm Angelica with Rappler. Um, I have a few questions po for Dr. Alampay. So first off, is this study the first pioneer of um, mga studies on PWDs here in the Philippines? At least, I mean, of course there are other studies on PWDs, but the study on Didao in particular and its implementation, as far as I know, this is uh, the first. Yeah, the first. Alright, so um, for you, so what motivated you to pursue the study, uh, specifically this year, Paul? Um, this is this is a commissioned uh, research by. Uh, I would have wanted to say I'm internally motivated to do this, but but uh, Taf actually approached us to if you wanted to uh, do the study. I think this is a very timely and interesting study that. Uh, when you think about it, the most vulnerable, if you address the most vulnerable, you're actually addressing practically the entire population to do a good service on that. Certainly, what was on, what was on TAP's mind when, when you commissioned it? Yeah. Will TAP, uh, our team in TAP, the Disability and Special Programs team, uh, are working on um, inclusive education and inclusive employment and the role of PIDAO in both um, in both in employment and education as you may have also noted in, in the presentations of the case studies is very pronounced and it, we have that has came up in a lot of conversations and particularly um, as I mentioned earlier that this was basically driven by our conversation on the way to Senate with uh, Dr. Rex Bernardo. So the question for us really was how is the PIDAO currently being implemented and how is it, has it impacted on the lives of persons with disabilities? So this is investigating the current status and also trying to find ways for us to uh, look at the current uh, policies and how to also find uh, uh, more policies to, for us to work on or improve on. One question here. Um, it could um, it could be a question or a comment at the same time. Um, with, for Miss um, Keaton, uh, Miss Melanie, yes. Um, don't you think it's a good um, it, the seal of good governance program is a is um would would be excuse me, would be interested to marry the prime HRM as a good indicator of organizational performance. Because um, for the prime HRM of the Civil Service Commission, there is, um, there is a provision actually for equal opportunity policy where it would be very helpful for the realization of 10524, which is the 1% or the affirmative action for employment. And this is to increase the employment um, opportunities of persons with disabilities in the government sector as well as outside the government sector. Because right now with the prime HRM, the, the indicators are really good in terms of making sure um, where, uh, in understanding where the performance of the government agency is. Um, parang the indicators is very inclusive in terms of looking at um, how the organization is performing um, using the, the four levels, which is the transactional um, integration and strategic human resources. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, regarding um, our partnerships, we are actually exploring um, other areas that um, can be integrated in the SGLC, and one of this is actually on HR. So um, maybe by the end of this year, we will be um, coordinating with CSC 
as to what um what indicators we actually meron na kasi silang mga recommendations eh, but we have to sit in with them uh, as to agree on what uh, we can um, adopt for the SGLD. So uh, we are expanding expanding our indicators, our partnerships yearly. So, uh, halimbawa, nag-start kami dati sa mga 20 lang, siguro may mga 40 um, agencies na kami na partners ngayon for uh, for the um, implementation of the SSLG lang. So, uh, yeah, we will be, we, uh, we I am noting your, ano po ma'am, your uh, recommendation, and uh, we will be talking it out with the CSC. Yes, focus it with the prime HRM. Um, we were able to see where the level of inclusion in terms of different programs, functions, and performance of, of every organization. Um, kasi po, if, if I remember it correctly, um, your indicator sa SGLG kanina, yung first indicator was about uh, accessibility. Um, I'm not just for clarification, I'm not sure if you um, if you just didn't mention about the other side or dimension of accessibility, because you just pointed out um, a single a single disability who will be uh, benefiting the accessibility. Is a narrow down lang po kasi siya, hindi pa siya madami. So is it ortho dominated uh, policy? No, no, no. Oh, not really, not really. Not really, no. I just want to make sure, because I don't think you have, you can call it inclusion if you're you're on a single dimension of disability. Because um, it was the toilet has been there for a long time, being um, emphasized in the ramps, but then no visual signs for the deaf brothers and sisters, the visual communication signs for them to be more independent in the community as well as for the visually impaired and etc. So okay. I just want to clarify the first indicator. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so I'm it's still dead. No, we will no, no, consider it no. Sir, Sir Mata, you <laughs> remind mo tayo pag nag-review. <laughs> Because the LG wanted it to increase, kaya, kaya unfair yung sabi ka nila na there is an increase, increase, increase in compliance. Pero nire-relax lang namin yung policy. <laughs> but the thing is, that, uh, may, may bias kasi yung BP3443C. Oh, sir. Parang hindi pa tayo limot doon. Oh, eh, de, kaya nga, pero ang bias kasi talaga, mobility issue kasi yan eh. So, mas may problema sila sa mobility. So, basically, ang um, BP3443 is more on the accessibility of physical this uh, uh, person with physical disability. So, pagpigyan na natin si BP344 sa JLG for social protection. For the meantime. For the meantime, sir. Progressive realization. Because we are appending BP344. Okay. But well, sir, what are we in the direction of going to universal design? Yes. Because we're going to push for the ILG and the seal of good governance says that they keep on requesting. To, to move on. No, the chief was requesting the CPA to relax the policy. That's why there's an increase in the LGBT. Sir, we are just focusing on some items. Hindi naman totally relax. Okay, one last question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, magandang hapon po. Ako pa si Joy from the Institute for Labor Studies. My question is related to the profiling which Ma'am already mentioned earlier. Specifically, I would want to uh, take this opportunity to ask uh, NCTA po, kung uh, are there current engagements or undertakings with PSA uh, on the uh, baseline survey profiling of our PWDs because uh, uh, I believe if we push for policy recommendations, nagbibase po kasi ang ating mga legislators sa current na, or sa status, kung nasaan ba sila, saan natin sila mahanap. Kasi I think there's a dearth of data when it comes to their income, to their earnings, kung uh, employed sila kasi sa PSA, ang meron lang po ay yung mga workers in the formal establishments with 20 employees and above. So that means mga 3,000 plus lang yung nakakapture niya. Eh usually, nasa informal sector po sila at hindi nakakapture. So, 
My question is, kung yun po, may undertakings po ba tayo with uh, PSA on uh, eventually, maybe not this year, but in the coming years, ma'am, na kung meron na tayong baseline survey. And second, when it comes to dun sa policy naman na 1% at least will be reserved in the uh, public sector, kung paano po ba nang monitor kayo ng civil service, kung meron po from civil service ito, or if NCTA has also coordination with civil service, on how do we monitor na yung 1% ay nare-reserve talaga for personnel who are PWDs po? Yun po. Okay, in response to your question, of course we have uh, engagement with PSA. Uh, tapos natin sila kawain, they came up with, <laughs> ako lang pala, ako lang pala, ako lang pala, ako lang pala. Atapos ko sila ang i-call yung attention nila and they promised to include persons with disabilities in the 2020 census. And they are now training into using the Washington Group of Questions in the next census. So hopefully baka Karoon tayo ng reliable census by 2020. And also, we now have just finished the National Disability Data Collection System, which we are going to roll out with different government agencies. And we are coming up with a reporting system for uh, LGUs and PITAW uh, to really capture disability data uh, at, the, at, the local, at the LG level. And uh, also with uh, national government agencies. And uh, our recent uh, initiative is to link uh, uh, data of uh, government agencies in our website. Like CNC is now linked uh, with NCDA, but of course, CSC now is still in the process of uh, 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 modifying their uh, uh, PDS, uh, the uh, uh, personal data sheet, to really reflect uh, disability uh, among uh, uh, people working in the government. And from there, we can see if they are really persons with disabilities employed in the government. And uh, with, uh, we were also uh, engaged with the uh, Department of Labor and Employment, uh, especially the Bureau of uh, Workers with the Special Concerns regarding uh, persons with disabilities in uh, informal uh, sectors and persons with disabilities in uh, wage employment. Kaya lang, nagkakagulo pa sila sa ano, sa tole, no, doon sa BWS because they have uh, sectoral uh, vocal person. Kaya lang, walang, pers walang vocal person for persons with disability. So, sabi namin, you have to appoint a vocal person uh, on our uh, person with disability, we should be working together with all the sector because, as you said, disability is cross cutting. So, uh, we will find them in uh, people in uh, with the IPs, with the senior citizen, with the child laborers, and the uh, separate, what do you say, informal sector. So, lahat ng the and uh, once we roll out our uh, NDDS, we hope that uh, we can uh, come up with at least uh, data uh, because that is our commitment in the and it is already a part of it is already included in the Philippine Development Plan. Okay, as much as I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, very very. Um, in addition to Ms. Carmen, regarding civil service, what I can share is right now what they're doing is um, they have revised um, the um, the four pillars of, of HR to make sure that they can expand the, the employment in um, the government sector of persons with disabilities. 
And um, apart from that, they are also putting in place technical mechanisms to to realize all these things. Kasi aminado naman ng ahensya na before we came as their technical consultants, um, we um, we were able to gather evidence that they really have big gaps in monitoring and with all these number things. So right now, the good news is there. Um, they have revised the processes, um, especially the, the indicators of um, prime HRM. So when it comes to employment, there's actually hope for our sector to um, expand the employment of persons with disabilities in the public sector, especially now that there um, are changes um, being done internally in the Civil Service Commission. Um, and that includes the, you know, I don't want to be so technical, but that, the part of what they're doing right now is data analytics as, as well as predictive analytics. And we are facing Sherman Bala on June 22 for the approval of all these systems after we have trained the, the government agency. Okay, so we have good news. Thank you, ma'am, for that. As much as we want to entertain more questions, time will not allow us. So. Thank you very much for your active participation in this Q&A session. At this point, may I request uh, Dr. Irving Alampay to present the tokens of appreciation to NCDA and DILG for their support to this research. Our tokens would include um, tote bags made by PWDs, and the profits of which will go to PWD athletes. We're also including coloring books featuring landmarks and the culture of the University of the Philippines. And may I call on Dr. Alambay for his closing remarks. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Again, everyone for uh, coming uh, today. Uh, the case writers, the people from the LGUs, our friends uh, from the PWD community. Uh, like I said earlier to the question of what's our motivation for doing this, I wish it was really as noble as what you are really advocating for. Uh, but we, 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 we recognize that the event is called uh, Enabling the Disabled, but in reality, it's actually enabling us able to have a poor appreciation of the issues that confront you. And we are very happy to have done this research and because it has opened a, a new way of thinking for us. Uh, things that we take for granted every day that a lot of you uh, in the PWD community have to uh, undergo or uh, face uh, every day. So, in behalf of CLRG, uh, we thank you very much for informing us, for <laughs> telling us the limitations of our study, and we hope to try to improve on it and make it better. And we hope uh, that together we travel this advocacy of improving the lives of uh, the people with disabilities and maybe all uh, make uh, our communities better in the future. Maraming salamat po sa Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Before we let you go, we just have one final request. Please join us for a group picture outside. Thank you.